Good morning everybody. My name is Nicola and I am simply a stitcher. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. So if you're new around here this is my fortnightly stitch with me. Um, I do a stitch with me one week and then a floss tube the following week unless something happens uh, in between and then I occasionally do miss one. Um, but this is uh, my stitch with me and I thought that I would have I would continue working on this design which is stitching jewels a polar bear and cub now I've been working on this design for a little while now but I've just now got to a point that I literally cannot put it down so um, even though I was meant to sort of switch out projects today I've just decided to continue on with this one and make some progress in it so at the moment we are, let's have a look at the pattern, 27.17% complete and this is how it's looking. Doesn't that just look wonderful? So yep, so I thought today we'd just have a little bit of a stitchy session um, and a little, little chat and uh, see how we go from here. So it is the 11th of October um, it's a Tuesday the house is nice and quiet I think I've forgotten to mark off some stitches yep I have <laughs> the house is nice and quiet at the moment so I'm taking advantage of that time to do this stitch with me um, I've been fairly uh busy this last sort of week um and at the weekend i was at a stitching retreat which i'm sure some of you are going to be loving to hear about today so yeah let's just grab a color i uh, do apologize in advance if uh, i sound a little croaky a little hoarse um <clears throat> I uh, I'm not unwell. I'm just you know it's just sort of early-ish in the morning. Well, I say early-ish. It's eight o'clock in the morning. Um, and normally sort of at eight o'clock I would be not saying very much, just doing a lot of stitching. <laughs> so there we are. I do have coffee. So. So I can uh, I can keep drinking. That's okay. So yeah. So the last few weeks. So what has been happening? I touched on it briefly in my floss tube, um, but a couple of weeks ago, Andy and I were up in Northumberland at Newbiggin by the Sea which is a lovely little town um, and not touristy at all so <clears throat> very nice to sort of walk through and it it mainly be populated by by local people um, we saw dolphins in the sea we sat and had fish and chips whilst overlooking the bay um, we went to Lindisfarne Castle to Holy Island I know I said I put some pictures in at the end of my floss tube and I forgot. <laughs> um, it is what it is, I'm afraid. Um, but again, as I said, they are on my Instagram. So if you are interested in taking a look, just, just sort of hop over to my Instagram, which is simply a stitcher. I put on a photograph there of, uh, of Lindy's farm. I think I did one of the bay as well. Um... So just finding my next colour. So, and then it was kind of, you know, come back and and, and essentially back to reality, uh, really. Um, back to work and, um, and, and, and life, I suppose. Um, and then this weekend I was away at the Floss Friends UK stitching retreat. 
and that was quite amazing it was a, a really really lovely couple of days um the first thing that happened was i got recognized and the second thing that happened was that the oh, just find a way to start this stitch bear with completely wrong part of the pattern <laughs> I got recognised and the lady who recognised me um, sat with me, uh, on my, well sat on my table throughout the retreat and it actually turns out that she lives, you know, about 500 yards away from me but I'd never sort of, I didn't even know that there were people in this neighbourhood who, who picked up cross stitching, it was, it was really weird and then there was another lady who was sort of a 10 minute walk away so you know that that was that was kind of weird um i went with my friend from work who also is a stitcher and we both made new friends and we had a lovely time um the stitching room uh, there was like a conference room where where the stitching room was they had a little room off where you could go and get you know a cup of coffee and whatnot and where lunch was served um there were lots of goodies there were some vendors there as well. I did make a couple of purchases, but I didn't go mad. Um, I'll show those in my next floss tube. Um, we also got some sort of freebies. There was a gift bag. Uh, we got needle minders. Uh, we got patterns, you know, and other sort of bits and pieces. And it was just, just lovely. And considering that, you know, we were in a room full of people that I'd not met before, there wasn't a single person to speak to that wasn't friendly. And I think that's just, you know, the pure nature of, of us as stitches. We are a friendly bunch. But yeah, it, it was lovely. Um, and, you know, we had nice weather so we could, you know, use the gardens of the, uh, the hotel as well. I stayed there overnight and I'd definitely go again, although I've not planned as yet anything for next year. Um, so, but yeah, it, it would just, I, I've never done anything like it before. And it was just a real experience for me, but I'll do it again. Definitely, I'll do it again. Took a couple of projects with me. I took the My Maui Princess and Minas Tirith. I only ended up working on Maui Princess though. Um, I don't know why, I just, you know, got stuck in, I suppose. But on our table, there were a couple of um, the floss tubers. There was Jess and her husband who were cross stitching, cross stitching smileys, I think. I have a terrible memory. Um, and I also met a couple of people who um, follow me um, on Instagram um, and a couple of the other sort of bigger, if you like, floss tubers. Uh, there was Lauren there, who's Floss Abilities. Beth Chadwick, Beth Chadwick was there and Emma from Emma X Stitching or Emma Cross Stitching. Um, not quite sure how she... Although I've watched her, I'm still not quite sure whether it's Emma X stitching or Emma Cross stitching. Anyway, so yeah, so there were there were a few frost tubers there as well, and it was lovely, and the the laughter, the conversation, you know, we we were sort of on our table, and I think we were perhaps the quietest table, but we did get time really to get sort of stuck into projects, um, but we could just sort of hear what was going on, and you're just picking up snippets of conversation you know i mean there was a lady that had flown across from germany for this to the uk and then traveled up the uk and of course at the moment the uk is having difficulties with sort of rail strikes and, and what have you but she still made it um it's just wow <laughs> you know it really was but there we go Saturday night we went to our uh, local pub and had our tea um, but you know we weren't sort of stopping up all night kind of thing 
there were there was a wedding going on at the hotel and um uh we did hear one or two other guests sort of late at night but that's to be expected so yeah we went down there on the saturday came back on the sunday and i'll be honest by yesterday tea time i'm like uh, can you just take me back to Retford, please? <laughs> oh, there we go. So, other than my trip away and um the retreat i can't sort of really think of, of much else that's happened we we just sort of seem to have kind of settled into a routine which i suppose in a way is a good thing but in a way is a bad thing <laughs> i i like to have you know things things happen i don't like unexpected and disasters don't get me wrong but i like for things to be to be happening having said that i've got a few filled weekends coming up i'm doing some stuff with andy um next weekend for village idiot um i'm doing a i've, I've got a surprise event later this month as well um i've got a wedding in december so that's sort of weekends taken up. And then in November, I've got my last annual leave. Um, I've got two weeks. And with that, I'll just move the camera along slightly. That's it. And with that, me and Andy are going off filming <clears throat> on that two weeks as well, but not all of the two weeks because I plan to do some of my Christmas shopping and I plan to um take the try and take the girls somewhere. Rail strikes depending. I mean don't get me wrong, I support them if they are not receiving a, a decent living wage, especially with the cost of everything these days. But you know, it it would it will be frustrating if I can't take them away but it is what it is so there we go so I hope everybody watching this has been well I do believe that again in this country in the UK we have seen another surge in COVID infections which is not good. I have to say and touching wood we've been very fortunate in this house there's only one person who has been directly affected and that's Hannah um and she had had a uh, covid over the summer when it was very hot and it was kind of hard for her to leave a room um and if she's in the front of the house which is south facing and in the morning that room gets all the light and all the sunshine so Even Victoria with the travelling sort of to and from between here and her boyfriends and here and work. She's she's been fortunate and dodged it and Lauren being in school, you know, where there's like fifteen hundred other pupils, she's managed to avoid it. Andy out at work, me I'm, I'm flipping my hoop, unusual for me. I'm still working from home, obviously. Um, and my home, my working from home is a permanent contract. So, um, 
I'll be just be continuing to work from home. Although I am going into office later this week. I am a little bit wary about it. I don't want to have it. Um, I don't think anybody would, would want to have it. Um, it's just a case of we have to see how it goes. It is what it is, won't we? It is worrying though when you think you're kind of getting to the end of something and then all of a sudden there's another surge. So I have to work today, but I had, I had, I had, I can't speak. <laughs> I had a little good news yesterday. I am a fully accredited now in my job, which is in my new role, which is really nice. It's been like eight months of work to get there. Um, I have days and I'm still not confident about what I'm doing. And I think I'm making a comp complete mess of everything but I am assured I'm doing a good job um, time to stand up I started my uh, CBT therapy for my anxiety um, a couple of weeks ago and if you met me at the retreat you wouldn't think that I suffered at all with anxiety but I'm, I'm, I'm kind of quite good at hiding it. Um, the way that I sort of hide it is I'm the funny one, you know, I try and make people laugh. Um, but sort of inside, I was, I was, I have to say, even though it was lovely and friendly, I was still a little bit anxious about, you know, what were people sort of looking at me and thinking kind of thing. Um, but yeah, uh, I started my therapy, so I'm hoping for, to make some inroads and some progress on that, because I don't want to spend my life just being anxious it's it's hard work oh flipping out your needles i'm threaded now it's hard work and I, I don't want that so i've taken the steps i'm getting on with it and i'm determined that i'm going to be i'm going to be better So I have another session of that coming up this week. <laughs> what colour have I got here then? Oh, that one. This one is going to be a bit of change in colours. There's lots of sort of blues and greys in this. But I, I'm sure you'll agree that, you know, it, it, the, the actual, the stitch up compared to the mock-up is completely different. The mock-up looks very pixelated, whereas the stitch up, let me just zoom out again. Whereas the stitch up doesn't look so pixelated. I'm, I'm absolutely delighted with it, I have to say. And... Uh, Although, yes, I am coming into another patch of white and, and confetti. That's fine. Because I can see how this piece is going to turn out now. I couldn't see it on the left on the left side. Well, it's, it's underneath here. But I can see how it's going to turn out and how it's going to stitch up now. I was actually having a mooch on uh, Instagram and uh, Jules, who did this one from Stitching Jules Designs, just put another couple of gorgeous pieces out 
And I'm sort of thinking, cracky, if you'd have left it a few extra weeks before asking me, I'd have done one of them. <laughs> um, she, she, she really has done a lovely variety in there, so it's definitely worth having a look in, in her her shop. I'll, uh, I'll make sure I link it down below. So... Oh, hello, cat. Cat's having a stretch and move. Ah, we've got her up to stretch, to turn around, to lay back down. Such a lazy lump, this cat. She's a pain in the neck, though, with me, because she'll come and try and literally sit on my keyboard when I'm working. Monkey. Ooh, uh, channel news. My, ooh, sorry about that, camera quake. My subscriber count, since I've had a couple of lovely shout outs from Blushing Pink Stitches, from Karen the Needlebug, and even from Andy, because I talk about him in pretty much every video. <laughs> My subscriber count has gone up. I am now no, nope, that's the wrong one. I am now at 981, which is phenomenal. So I am not a million miles away from the Magic Thousand. I'm looking forward to getting there so I can start to do some lives. Now, I did sort of say in my floss tube that I was kind of looking at something like a Thursday night or sort of something like that to do a live video. Um... And it's sort of, you know, come with sort of nods of agreement. So I think I will be looking at a Thursday sort of going forward. Um, when I'm, when I, when the functionality is enabled so I can do some live videos. I've got, um, you know, a full coverage still from the new year, new start that's not started. I cut the fabric in, what, February, March, something like that. That's as far as I've got. Um, so I'd like to sort of try and do that on a live um, and sort of have that as my, as a live stream piece. I was, I was, pipe dream, I know. I was kind of hoping to be at a thousand subs and, and live enabled, you know, by on my phone uh, a long time before this, but it's just not happened. And I don't have the, technological stuff to sort of uh yeah i'm not technologically minded at all you know for me you'll always get a very basic video i can't put pictures in corners um anything that with editing that's all andy's department he does it for me i just film the thing and hand him my phone when i'm done <laughs> so So yeah, it'd be nice to sort of be able to start and do some live feeds, um, some live stitchy times. I think then <clears throat> the chatting sort of becomes different because you're talking to people, you're answering people. So what I might do is instead of doing a stitch with me like this, instead just do a live feed but may do an occasional stitch with me for other projects as well i've had some other uh, stitchy related news too i am going to be adopting some whips so a lady um has sent me a message on instagram and said I can see that this kind of thing is your jam. I'm not doing them. I've kind of fell out with them. I don't have time, you know, what, whatever it was. Would you like to adopt them? I'm like, yeah, I'll adopt them. Um, I'm just trying to sort of think what they were. Let me see if I can load up Instagram. Instagram, Insta, 
It helps if you actually put the cursor on the right place. Instagram. Right, so. There is a stitch along, which has got all parts. A Camelot sampler by Teresa Wentzler. Um, a Santa sampler by the Cooler Design Studio as well. So, yeah. Um, they're all designs that I've looked at before. Um, but so yeah, I'm, I'm 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 quite looking forward to those because it's next year. Although I'm I'm still wanting to stitch and stitch as much as I can, I don't necessarily be want to want to be focusing all of my time on full coverage because I have got some non full coverage stuff that I do want to do. So I've got like things like um, um, I've got some kits that are not full coverage. There's one a realist kit that I won last year which is not full coverage. Uh, was it last year or this year? Um, I've got my Disney um, stuff from the part work that I've been collecting as well and um, a couple of non full coverage sort of stamp kits so although I still want to do full coverage I also want to put in some non full coverage stitching as well so it's be quite a, quite quite nice to do that and of course I've got things like I've got pandemic that still needs to be finished uh, which is which is of course non full coverage um, and I want to sort of be able to get that done because I saw I saw one of those done at the retreat and it was massive I think it was done on like 14 or 16 counts or something it was huge it was absolutely stunning and I've sort of done mine on 28 count which is like you know a fraction of the size of it and I'm sort of at page 15 and kind of come to a grinding halt because I've just focused so hard this year on my full coverage stuff but I want to kind of make next year a bit more stitchy variety I don't think I will get another large finished before the end of this year. I'm pretty sure that this piece will be done and the Middle Earth uh, travel poster, the Minas Tirith one that I've had on the go, I'm pretty sure that will be done. But I don't think I'll get another large finish. Um, so I will be taking my Maui Princess um, Envy stitching shelf realm and middle earth map those will all be coming with me into next year and if i have started the live then it's the um super size max color leonid aframov piece um which i the name of it escapes me right now night cafe that's it super sized night cafe so you know they'll be coming in with me into next year um the only sort of solid plan that I have is to try and make kids are off to school um, is to try and make the oh chuffy now what do you call it stitching shelf my weekend piece good grief I don't know if you heard that scream there it's like a blood curdling scream just outside my window I'm set back from the road too. Oh, excuse me. Oh, 
Sounds like some child's having a real tantrum out there. Yeah, so my only sort of solid plan is um, a stitching shelf is, is going to be on the weekend because I've kind of got used to already doing that now over the last sort of few weeks. Although, as, as you as you all know, I didn't do it last weekend because I wasn't even uh, in Rotherham. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it... it I want to sort of get get progress on that. I want to get progress on them all, and I I just kind of without wishing to you know wanting to wish my life away. Work definitely gets in the way because there's like thirty odd hours, forty hours a week there that I could spend stitching. I saw some fabulous finished pieces on the uh, finishes table at Retford last week. Some heaven and earth designs. There was a lady who brought a beautiful Siamese cat. Uh, I saw a Jasmine Beckett Griffith. I saw a Donna Gelsinger. I saw a Tilton piece or two. I saw some um, samplers. There was obviously, the, you know, as I said, the lady had pandemic there as well. Um, there were lots of little makes, um, people who'd done flat folds and things. There's some pain-free craft pieces. And one of the most interesting ones that I found was there was some actual stitching using perforated paper that was stitched onto a sheet from a book. And it was like, I think it was like something like Swallows and Amazons or something. I think it was Swallows and Amazons. And I just thought, well, what an amazing idea. You know, I mean, you can buy sort of these books sort of quite cheaply in a charity shop. A bit of perforated paper, stitch an appropriate design, you know, pop it in a frame and, you know, add some embellishments. And you've got a really beautiful, you know, sort of... A keepsake item to sell how how fabulous is that or to give away or you know gift or whatever how brilliant is that i took a small because they did a smalls exchange as well and i took um I made, uh, a, a, it was a little fox holding a poppy uh, because the theme was either autumn or Halloween and I'm not a Halloween stitcher, I have to say. I, I, I Everybody stitches their own sort of thing but for me Halloween is not, you, you know, not on my list. Um, and uh, I, so I chose this, this little... Um, autumn fox and um, what I did was to finish it I'd got a coaster blank so I put it into a coaster and the lady who received it was so pleased she actually sort of was going around every table saying did you do this did you do this and then when she got to mine I'm like yeah it were me and she's like it's beautiful and you know she absolutely loved it so um, I was quite pleased with that, and and I was the recipient of a of a little cushion um, with uh, I I think it's either a raven or a blackbird, um, and then with the floss friends retreat uh, stitched onto the back as well, which I'll of course I'll show in me in my floss tube. So. quite fun actually watching people picking stuff up and you think have they got mine yet have they got my parcel <laughs> i've never ever done an exchange like that before ever just 
3842, I think. Yeah. This uh, piece, because it's only a small, my floss is in little bags and some of them's on a floss card. So if you do hear the plastic bag, it's just me picking out a new colour. Sounds like the kiddies have gone in school now. So that's peace and quiet for the mums for a bit. I am not going to be... Well, I'm 35 minutes in. I'm going to do about another 15 minutes. Because then I have to get ready for work, sadly. And when I say ready for work, it means I have to log in. Get my computer all set up, nip upstairs to the loo below, pop some clothes on as well because I'm still in my gym jams. I'm not even sorry. Um, and uh, then crack on with my nine to five, but you guys all know where I'll be doing. I'll be counting down the minutes to my break or to my lunch or a time where I can snatch a few extra stitches in. I have to confess that the last sort of week or so, I've not done as much stitching as I would like. Um, I felt a little bit tired now. Whether that's because it's getting dark much earlier or not, I don't know. But I felt very tired recently. Um, I mean, it could just be that I'm doing too much. Who knows? this little patch of colour and then I've got a lot of white to fill in. I'm just really happy with how this one's turning out. I really am. Like I said, it, it looks different from the mock-up. The mock-up will give us an indication, but seeing it stitched is, is, is definitely a whole different ball of wax. This is what we were like on that table at the weekend. Burst of conversation, then silence for a bit, and all you could hear, well, say all you could hear. You couldn't necessarily hear them, but all that was happening was that needles were, were going through fabric. So... took myself for a walk on the Sunday morning. I have uh, an interest in, if you've watched Andy's channel, uh, you'll see when I pop up in there, I have an interest in architecture. Uh, I have an interest in uh, buildings, in history and uh, cemeteries. So I took myself for a walk around Retford Cemetery with, uh, with my phone. Um, 
who knew that Samsung phones were so terrible at stabilisation when you're walking along. Um, so I'm definitely in the market for a GoPro now. Excuse me. Um, what have I done here? Snip this one at the back. I feel it's tight enough. Um, yes, I'm definitely in the market for a GoPro. Um, and I put out my first sort of offering on Andy's channel. It's just just me, not him. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's been quite well received. So I should plan to do some more. Let's just check that there's no other white yet. Black. Going to Selby this weekend because it's his uh, last visit to Selby for the channel, and uh, hopefully going to meet a few sort of viewers and things, which will be nice. It's quite nice, Randy, because he gets recognised quite a bit. I mean, obviously I got recognised at the retreat, but he gets recognised a heck of a lot more than I do. And, uh, you know, even like last year, you know, a couple of weeks back when we were up on, on Lindisfarne on Holy Island, walking down the street there and this lady just walked up to him and says, you're the village guy. And Andy's like, yep. <laughs> and he turns to me and he says, the last place I expected to be recognised is in a district I've never been in before. In a place I've never been in before. You know, it, on an island. <laughs> on an island. I'm like, yeah. It's cool, that, isn't it? Lindisfarne, the whole island, is, is absolutely beautiful. Very characterful. Um, there's not a lot of homes on the island, but the ones that are there are just gorgeous. Um, I should imagine it's quite expensive to live on there. They do have a lot of, like, Airbnb and sort of that kind of thing and you're limited with access to the island because it's accessed via a causeway and you can only travel across to it if the tides are right if the tides are not favorable a bit tough really you can't get across um everything on the island is kind of dictated by the tides the, the children's schooling is dictated by the tide. You know, if they can't sort of get across to the mainland to school, um, you know, then they have to sort of stay on a little uh, school building that's on the island. Lovely place. Lovely place. I'd live on it, I'm pretty sure. Um, there's like a little tiny village store thing which has essentials, but you'd have to be sort of going off the island regularly to go up to Berwick, um, you know, for like a grocery shop or, or whatever. Because um, all the shops, mainly the shops on the island are touristy. Um, So yeah, we had the we had lovely weather, which makes a huge difference as well. If you're not walking in mud or wet or getting your feet wet, it makes a massive difference. Oh, I'm going over two there. Guess I'm a wally.
White on white is not easy to stitch. Come on, thread up needle, thread up. No, doesn't want to thread up this one. <coughs> oh dear. Longest it's taken me to thread a needle in ages, that. Sounds like we've got a few late stragglers going into the school round the corner. Mind you, the other ones earlier might have been for like Breakfast Club or something. So there'll be a bit of a racket again, I think, as they go past. Some of these little ones out there on a scooter, I think. Lots of shouting going off. Do you know what? During the six weeks holiday, it was lovely and peaceful because there was oh, camera earthquake. Because there was none of this. There was no um, school or anything. And I could sort of sit here all morning and not hear a sound apart from the odd car passing by. Now the kids are sort of back in school. It's uh, it's definitely got a bit busier out there. I really, really hope that I'm hitting every square <laughs> on this white because I have to say, white on white is not easy to see. I think I am. Now my eyes are bad, but they're not sort of that bad just yet that I can't see that. Ah, oh, brushing them in now. I do like patches of colour. Ooh, looks like I might have missed a colour. Mm. 
Yes. Now this this one here is not a light stitch. Let's have a look. Oh, or is it? Let's investigate. So it's that one there. Nope, should be a 162. Oh well, never mind, I'll get that out in a minute. That's chatting such as it is today because I don't have an awful lot to say but we are at 50 minutes now and uh, as I said I do need to get myself ready um, and set up for work finish my coffee make another <laughs> do a couple of other bits and pieces I think we've got a fair few stitches in now about a hundred and about 150, which isn't bad, is it? About 50 minutes of work. Yeah, that's it. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I'm going to leave it there. You got that one six nine to do that extra um, stitch, but yeah, you can see that face, isn't it? Just fantastic. Look at that. So pleased with that. And then I shall spend the, the rest of the day, I think, filling in all the white along here to the end of his nose here. And then it's lots of little confetti colours right to the end and then a lot of white. And again, we start with the baby bear in the bottom half of, of this guy on the, the bottom section of this piece. So, so yeah, right. So I'm going to say goodbye and see you all on the next one. Next week will be a floss tube. Although as it, as it stands, I've only touched three projects. So... Um, I'm hoping to sort of get at least another two or three out um, before my floss tube. But all that's left for me to say is uh, take care, guys. Happy stitching. Thank you for watching. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. Um, it's, it's always very much appreciated. It doesn't cost anything. It's just a simple press of the button. And then if you press the notification bell, you'll be notified when I next upload a video. So, uh, as I said, guys, take care, happy stitching, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.